Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. Today, we are going to be talking about one of the most overlooked issues surrounding people that cannot seem to get well. These are people with Lyme. These are children with autism. These are people with digestive-based issues, autoimmune, or inflammatory-based conditions. And what many of these people have in common but don't know it because it's difficult to test for is an overgrowth and an imbalance in what are called biofilms. If you've never heard about biofilms before, this will hopefully be an eye-opening podcast and show because what I want to do today is allow you to take a peek into what we do inside of our private practice that I learned many years ago. Again, all of this is through research and study that I would say 10 x our success, especially with gut-based disorders. And again, how many people have a root cause-based factor in gut issues that then lead to their autoimmune or their inflammatory-based conditions. That's why I believe this is one of the most important topics not spoken about. And in my opinion, not enough doctors and practitioners are using these protocols in order to help their patients and wellness clients. So it's my goal today to bring biofilms to light, tell you exactly what they are and why they could be, truly could be, the missing factor and why you are not healing, especially if you've done rounds of antibiotics and all sorts of medications, etc. So what I'd like to share with you today is simply what are biofilms. Let's talk about that first, and then we'll go into how they affect us, how they're formed, and what we can do about getting rid of them. So the biofilms themselves are actually created by pathogenic-based bacteria. We're talking about pathogenic bacteria today. There are some actually beneficial ones. But pathogenic-based bacteria that adheres to some surface of the body, typically part of the gut, so the intestines, or nasal passages, or throat. And what happens from here is that the actual bacteria, when it adheres to the surface, begins to then produce what's called a polysaccharide matrix. You don't need to know exactly what this is, but think of it as almost like a fibrin connection, almost like a mesh net, we'll call it, or a mucus based plaque. And the way that they, it holds itself together is by actually drawing in calcium, magnesium, iron, potentially zinc, but believe it or not, heavy metals. So one of the reasons why people hold on to heavy metals for so long is they can actually make up part of these biofilms. And what the biofilm's role is, is to actually protect the bacteria or the fungi, the yeast, underneath it. Now, why would it create this? Why would this happen? Keep in mind, these bacteria are, well, single cell or otherwise, parasites, are actually living things. They do not want to be killed or destroyed. So they're essentially putting a protective shield over themselves. I mean, a shield is a better name than a biofilm. It is a film, like it's a mucus-based film. But at the same time, they're putting a roof over their house. They are, put, they are guarding themselves with a shield. And then what begins to happen is they created their own colony, their own community, where now they start to absorb some of your nutrients so you don't get them. They also change the actual pH of either the nasal passages, the throat, the digestive system, wherever they may be hidden. Why this matters is that the pH of your body is supposed to be standardized based on the location. The pH of the inside the cell is different. The pH of your blood is different. The pH of your small intestine is different than the pH of your colon or your large intestine. And what happens is if there's a variation in pH, well, there can start to be more carbon dioxide produced. There can start to be more bacteria that's allowed to overgrow if it's a, if it's a little too alkaline all right, or a little too acid in terms of yeast and fungus. 
So this is important to look at that. But here's the bigger thing. It allows the bacteria that shouldn't be there and the yeast or candida overgrowth or the fungi or maybe even mold to continue to proliferate. Or what about Lyme? What about the bacteria involved in that as well? Well, biofilms are a big factor because the actual bacteria and the fungi that we hope to remove, whether it be through a natural-based protocol that I'm going to share with you, or antibiotics, or antifungals, it can actually be touched. We are finding now through actual medical science that because of biofilms, antibiotics are not able to reach the actual bacteria themselves because that bacteria now is hidden, hidden from the antibiotics. And I believe we will see in the future, because we already know that it happens with mold, I think we'll begin to see in the future that these biofilms, as well as the bacteria under them, begin to actually alter the immune system. So not only does it not allow your body to produce the type of immune cells to go after the particular bacteria, it actually rewires it. It actually begins to shut down certain parts of your immune system. And now we can start to think of autoimmune in a little different way of bacteria that is essentially being protected. Really important to look at this. Even though it's in the literature, again, I can, I'll can point out one study today. And this is about a year and a half ago. It was published in, let's see where it was published. Well, it, the title of the study is called Gut Biofilm Forming Bacteria in Inflammatory Bowel Disease. And again, you don't need me. Oh, this was type actually published in Micropathology. So why this is important, and it's, again, it's on PubMed by the National Institute of Health, is that we know, like this is, again, these things are all proven. I'm not bringing you anything that, that hasn't already been proven. But the problem is, it's just so difficult to actually get a sample of these things. And that's because the biofilms are tucked away in your 23 feet of intestine. And really, what are we going to do? Send a, and do an endoscopy that actually goes through your pyloric valve in your stomach and then all the way down into your small intestine and actually then take a snip? And that's pretty invasive. So we're typically not doing that. And even if they could get the sample, well, then what would the medical literature do about it? There's not a lot that they can do yet. However, there is in natural-based health. And that's what I want to share with you. So really why I'm bringing this up today is because there's a lot of people dealing with strep-based bacteria that are essentially not responding to antibiotics. There's a lot of people with Lyme disease that are not responding to antibiotics as well. Same with lupus, same with rhinocyanitis. So people basically with eosinophilic-based issues and really through an overgrowth of fungus in the nasal passages, they're not able to get rid of. And we'll talk about that today as well. And then, of course, so many people with Crohn's, colitis, ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel disease, IBS, etc. And what I want to share with you is this. Just because we get the diagnosis for what it is and we're using the best of conventional medicine doesn't mean you're going to be able to fix it. That was my story so many years ago, right? Well, they knew I had postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome called POTS. They knew I had Addison's disease. They knew I had rheumatoid arthritis and they knew I had type 2 diabetes. Well, okay, what were they going to do? I mean, that's the thing. Is like, well, what are you going to do? Okay, so I got prescribed Cortef for Addison's. I could prescribe Flornef for POTS. And uh, they, I was only 17, so they didn't even know what to make of the rheumatoid arthritis. They didn't know what to make of the type 2 diabetes. So well, we just let those be and hope that by working on the anti-inflammatory nature of providing my body now with cortisol, that I was going to be able to help with those. And truthfully, that did. Now, is that a long-term solution? No. People who take those types of medications, they don't live a very long life typically, and they don't do the best. And so essentially, I got pretty stubborn. And I got pretty fed up. And I said, we need to figure out another way. And, and that's what we did. But there was no solution besides the medication. And I'm here to tell you today that there is. There is a solution. And I also want to say, can we help a lot of these kids with autism? You know, how can we help them? We know that there's a big association with gut-based issues and intestinal permeability, and now we're looking at biofilms in kids with autism. So my goal today is just to let you know that this is a real thing. I mean, this is a real thing caused by bacteria in the body. Secondary sources could be, in any type of bacteria, secondary sources could be fungal overgrowth as well, and potentially parasites. But the nice thing is this. I'm going to give you proven protocols to help you break up these biofilms. And it's not going to cause harm in the way that a lot of drugs may do. So what we do is we look at specific enzymes. That's the amazing thing, is that enzymes 
break things down. So enzymes are naturally produced, let's say, just food. So for example, around two years old, as a toddler, as a small child, you start to produce amylase. And amylase is an enzyme produced in those salivary glands. It's only one part of it in your mouth. That helps to break down starch. So, okay, so we can start to break down starch in our mouth. We chew it. We mix it with saliva. We can, we can actually work on that. And then, of course, if the food isn't cooked above 118 degrees, and I'm not saying you shouldn't cook food, well, there's enzymes present in pretty much all types of food. And the reason is that eventually that apple has to fall from the tree, and as we break down those cells, the enzymes has to actually be able to degrade and break down the food itself so that it just doesn't stay there forever. Like, this is a normal process. So we know that by taking proteases, we can break down protein. By taking cellulose, we can break uh, cellulase, we can break down the cellulose structure of vegetables. And lipase will help break down uh, fats and lipids. And by taking, uh, what else, xylanase, we can break down fructins in certain foods. And so the list goes on and on. But remember, there's an enzyme for basically everything. Well, what are the enzymes to break down biofilms? There's a lot of research on this, but I can give you the ones that I know work from clinical practice as well as research. Because some things work nice in research, but not so well in the real world, right? Because some research is based on animal-based studies. And I'm not against using animal studies. I'm, I'm not against that. I'm not for poor treatment of animals, that's for sure. I don't approve of that at all. But when we know certain things work for animal-based models, we can certainly use that with humans as well. Again, does it play out in the real world? Well, that's for clinicians to figure out. That's for clinicians to decide what is going on. So some of my favorite biofilm disruptors, I'll just give you the main three that I like to use, and this will make it pretty simple. It's called serapeptase. Okay, serapeptase is one of those biofilm disruptors that we know helps with staph-based bacteria and other forms of bacteria. Another one that I really like is called natokinase. Now, the amazing thing about natokinase, the amazing thing about serapeptase, is it can also help with, let's say, buildup in the arteries, right? I want to stay within my zone, my scope here. So let's talk about if you have buildup in your arteries attached to the cardiovascular system, you may want to look into these, serapeptase and natokinase. And there's one more that we want to add to that. Those are called proteases. And proteases break down proteins. Now, these are different than regular daily digestive enzymes. Daily digestive enzymes are amazing for helping you to keep more of your own natural energy because it helps break down your food to a greater degree. Well, what do we do then with these proteases, these natokinase, the serapeptase? And there are others. There's, there's streptokinase and there's, there's, there's others out there, okay? But we're going to go with those for now as enzymes because I don't want to confuse this picture. Now, the difference with this, typically you're taking daily digestive enzymes along with meals, about 10 minutes before the meal or just with the meal is fine. It will work the same. It's not a big deal. So what you do with these biofilm disruptors, these specialty enzymes, is you actually take them on an empty stomach. First thing in the morning is the best time to take them. And the reason is you will most likely have not eaten for eight hours, 12 hours, potentially even more. So now it's unabated by any food. There's no food left in that stomach or certainly not in the first part of your small intestine. So now what we do is the enzymes go in and they actually move through the small intestine and into the large intestine and they begin to do their work. And their work is to digest. Enzymes digest and break down. So their job now is to actually touch that biofilm and break it down. What does it do when it breaks it down? Well, now it exposes the parasites, the bacteria, the fungus, whatever else is growing there that shouldn't be there. Now is our opportunity to use antimicrobials to also remove the bacteria, the parasites, the candida that should not be there. And again, we're not treating disease here. We're not curing disease. I want to just mention that. We are rebalancing a healthy body to healthy levels. So this is why I love going in, and it's part of our CBO protocol. I'll explain it all at the end is using things that we know, such as a lorocytin or monolaurin is another name for it, coming from like coconut oil. So like you say like, oh, well, what can I use that's just like from food? You could do two to three tablespoons of coconut oil per day. It's not the best thing in the world, but it certainly will help. Certainly will help with biofilms. Certainly will help to kill fungus and bacteria. No doubt about it. Nothing wrong with that. What's another one? Well, another big one 
But I don't recommend this in the beginning because it can actually feed. It can be a feeding facilitator because it is a prebiotic, would actually be garlic. Cloves of garlic can help as well. We use that for our parasite rebalancing protocol, but we don't use it for our candida and bacterial overgrowth protocol because of its ability to act as a precursor, a basically prebiotic. Now, again, in the future, of course, we add it back in, but not right away. What else can help, though, to break down these biofilms? Colloidal silver. Colloidal silver can be another one. Four to six weeks of colloidal silver, you could potentially use that. I like to use these biofilm disruptors for a month or two, okay? That's a, part of our CBO protocol is eight weeks of biofilm disruptors. It's a product called Flora Film, F-O-F-L-O-R-A, F-I-L-M at Equilibrium Nutrition. Now, again, you don't have to use that product. I just gave you what's in it. Ours is just a full spectrum product. And it actually has something, a little something in there called EDTA that will help with heavy metals that may be coming out of that biofilm as well. That's why we do that. Remember, everything is thought through. Like there's always a method behind the madness. There really is. This is also then a good time. I do it around week six or week 12 with a lot of people with big biofilm issues. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm them. So sometimes I wait till after the CBO protocol is done at week 12 to do this. And we do a heavy metal detox. Okay. It's not difficult. It's not hard. There's not going to be huge detox reactions, but a heavy metal detox is going to bind up a lot of these metals as well. And that's why I love to do that at the same time or at the 12, 6, 12 week mark. So here's how it works. And again, colloidal silver can also be used as a nasal spray. If you're someone who always has post nasal drip, who's always dealing with a runny nose, who's always dealing with nasal congestion, it may not be a bad idea to try the nasal spray by Nutribiotic or the colloidal silver nasal spray by Sovereign Silver. Okay, two great companies. Again, what Equilibrium Nutrition does and what I do as an integrative health practitioner is I recommend the best of the best. Okay? We don't have a better nasal spray than Nutribiotic. That's why we recommend them. We don't have a better colloidal silver than Sovereign Silver, which is why we'd recommend them. So again, I'll, I'll try to link these up in the podcast, but for sure, everything is available at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast to search. And all the products that I talk about are available at equilibriumnutrition.com, including the CBO protocol. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you exactly how that works. So if you're someone dealing with digestive issues, autoimmune, et cetera, hard to, hard to really fix-based conditions. What the CBO protocol does is essentially, it has three parts, okay? It's a removal of the biofilms. It is then a removal of the pathogens that are there, candida bacteria, et cetera, through use of antimicrobials. This is different now, the biofilm disruptors. That's why you can't just do an all-for-one. There's no one product that's like the silver bullet, but it's things that contain berberine, or golden seal, or oregano, or uversi, or grapefruit seed extract, or artemisia, right? So all of these things work in order to kill pathogens. Now, we've known this for thousands of years. They were using it in the Amazon in South America. They were using it in India. They were using it in China. Like all over the world, people use herbs in order to kill pathogens. Somehow today, we've kind of lost sight of that, even though, again, I bring back the research. I show people artemisinin can be used as an anti-malarian-based drug. And again, I'm not promoting the use of that because I'm, it's outside of my scope of practice to give you medical-based advice. So I'm not doing that. But I can show you the studies that show it's as effective or better. So again, just wanted to share that with you. So the CBO protocol, biofilm disruptor. You must remove the biofilms. We used to use it just for four weeks. About five years ago, we switched that to be eight weeks because sometimes it needs longer. And that's okay. No harm. We're going to open that up. Then we're using the antimicrobials. Okay, that's for the total of 12 weeks. And then what we're doing is we're repopulating the gut. Because remember, you don't need probiotics all the time month one. What you really need is a removal process. And after you've done the removal process, you can slowly begin to strategically, which means small intestinal-based strains first, integrate those probiotics back into the system. This is truly how to rebalance your gut. There is no better way. Honestly, there is no better way. I've been studying this since I was 19 years old. For two years, I had no idea what natural health was from 17 to 19. All I did was go from specialist to specialist. All of a sudden, 19 years old, oh, I'm introduced to something called the HPA axis and the adrenals. And then I find out about food sensitivities and I find out about candida overgrowth and I find out about SIBO and H. pylori. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, why 
did I never know anything about this before? And then I started to work protocols and this didn't work and that didn't work and this worked a little bit. Oh, and that worked too. And then I realized, okay, this is how we combine them. This is how we put them together. And slowly over the years, I put this together and about five years ago, we settled into a protocol that we know that's going to help people rebalance that gut and really rebalance their overall health. So that is called the CBO protocol. But again, I just gave you exactly what it is. You can actually go to equilibriumnutrition.com, click on our CBO protocol and see all the different products. We don't hold anything back. If you want to use your favorite brands, if you want to work with your functional medicine doctor, your integrative health practitioner, then we are, we're okay with that. The goal is to give you the knowledge. What you decide to do after you get that knowledge is how you choose to apply it. And that's really all that, honestly, all that matters to me is you get the knowledge and that hopefully you act on that knowledge because knowledge is not really power until it's been implemented. Once you implement it, you start to get the results. And honestly, at the end of the day, that's what I want. I want you to write in with a success story saying that here's where I started. This is what I was struggling with. Here's how I overcame it. For most health practitioners, that's why we do what we do. It's a lot of work. It really is. It's a lot of work. And you're working with some really challenging cases. But at the end of the day, all those success stories, well, they certainly make it all worthwhile. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. Hopefully it was helpful. And of course, if it was, if it can help anybody, please do feel free to pass this show along to anyone you believe it could serve. Are you ready to heal yourself and then go on to heal others? If so, the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute can help you discover proven functional medicine protocols that blend the best of seven different healing disciplines from around the world. I personally share with you the exact handouts and protocols I use in my private practice that enable people to get well, lose the weight, and live longer, stronger. I want to pass this information on to the next generation of health coaches, and that is exactly why I created IHP. We are the future of the health coaching industry, and the skills and knowledge you will learn will make you an in-demand certified health coach anywhere in the world. Although we have many medical professionals taking the IHP certifications, no experience is necessary and half our members have no previous health certifications. At the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute, our motto is a health coach in every home. Our goal is that you take this knowledge and then share it with family, friends, loved ones, your community, or in a practice where you create a career you love and can be proud of. The global IHP community is filled with some of the most kind and caring people in the world, and we can't wait to welcome you into our world soon. For more information or to set up a discovery call with one of our IHP Health Coach graduates, simply head over to integrativehealthpractitioner.org.